I think that um, having primordial prevention starting early in life and, and using statins aggressively uh, before the disease process begins is critical to really making a major impact on cardiovascular disease rates. We have the tools actually to prevent heart disease throughout someone's lifetime. You know, there's evidence from genomic studies that keeping your LDL below 80 throughout your whole life can completely block the effects long term. So um, I think that um, when we look at what we can do early can make a, make a huge difference. So I, I'm, I'm a strong advocate uh, for that approach. You know, it comes to putting statins in the water supply. I think it, 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 it's not practical and it's something that I know that people are going to push back on. So I'd rather do targeted approaches that look at higher risk people you know, based on their risk factors or family history and, 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 and as we're moving forward with a genomic risk score that can identify early in life who's going to develop premature heart disease. Uh, I think the poly pill is a good idea. Uh, I, I, I think that um, the struggle with that it is is that um, there is this issue about compliance and even one pill a day, even, and it'll be a big pill and there's issues about how to formulate it correctly and all that kind of stuff. I think it's a good concept and, and treating multiple risk factors even to a modest degree uh, together can make a big difference in, mag in the magnitude of benefit. But I think that um, we need to think about other things that we can do to um, to maximize risk reduction. And the thing, the things are underway. There's exciting technologies that can maybe give you know, long-term benefits with just one injection uh, and, and things like that, which I think is where the future is going to go, is, is starting getting people treated early and with uh, very infrequent changes in the, whether using genomics or genetic uh, editing or interfering RNA that we can actually be it looks, looks very exciting to how we can get somebody treated early and then have to worry about them taking a pill every day going forward. Uh, I would recommend it even younger. I mean, I, I think it's, like I said, I think primordial prevention is the key, starting at age 20, uh, keeping that LDL down. But there's, a, there's actually this kind of game you can play. Is it, you're better off lowering cholesterol from age 20 to 40 or, or, or 40 to 80. And it looks like, you know, 20 to 40 actually might be the better age range to think about lowering cholesterol. So I think from that perspective, um, I think I'm a big advocate for getting started early in life when it comes to risk factor modification, especially lowering LDL cholesterol. I think the vulnerable patient is a better way to think about it rather than vulnerable plaque. And uh, we know that, that patients that have documented atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease but also have additional factors such as diabetes or more recent events or panvascular, multivascular disease are more vulnerable for cardiovascular events. So I think we could do a better job of uh, subdividing atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease patients into those that are lower risk and those that have extremely high risk based on these other high risk features.